Good morning, everyone. This is Eileen Polis from Long Beach Public Library. I hope everybody's well. Welcome to my memories program. Um, and today I have a special program. I had actually been talking to um, some of the people who join my program monthly when I do the Long Beach Memories. And they said, you know, Eileen, your family has been in Long Beach for many, many years. Your grandfather had a beautiful restaurant up on the beach. Um, why don't you talk about your family? And I kind of felt like, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll think about it. So I thought about it a lot since COVID started, we've been doing these programs online. And um, I actually decided that I would like to do that because yes, my grandfather came to Long Beach in the, in the late 20s or early 30s and um, opened several restaurants in town. And so today I'm sharing with you um, my family's uh, history in Long Beach and how it all started. Um, my grandfather was known to many, many people as Captain Mike, and we are the Shipahoy family um, in business since 1929. And as you can see on the screen, there's my grandpa in front of his, um, his store in Manhattan. And welcome to my program and thank you. My grandfather was born in a small little island in between Gre in Greece, um, most southern, but like by Crete, and it's called Kithra. This is the Katuni Bridge. Right behind this bridge is where my grandfather was born. He's born on a very tiny island in Greece. Um, this bridge, bridge was built by the British in 1826. Um, as you can see, it's a, it's a beautiful um, landscape and it still looks just very much like this because I took this picture in 1992. This is the house my grandfather was born in. Um, it's a, a one room house with a small kitchen in the back with a wood stove and an outhouse. My great, my grand, great grandparents raised eight children in this home as a one bedroom and this is where he was born. This is a photograph. This is my great grandparents and these are the children that were raised in that home plus some cousins. And my grandfather is not in this photograph because he was already in America. He already came to America in 1916. And this is in front of the home. You could see the house behind here. My grandfather's name was Mikhali Semetekalis, um, also known as Michael Samet, born in 1899, passed away in 1965. He was a benefactor to the island of Kithara where he was born. When he came to America, he wanted to be able to send money back to his home in his country and to provide um, help for his people. He helped build a hospital, um, a high school, um, so actually two schools, there were streets named after him. The King of Greece at the time was King Paul and he bestowed upon my grandfather the gold cross of the Phoenix. It's because of his generosity and continued love and support for the Catherian people and he was a uh, president of the Catherian Association in New York. I also put on here the website so you could read about the order of the Hellenic order of the Phoenix and where it comes from. You could see my grandfather with his decorations in this photograph. He started out in Lincoln Square back in 1929. He came to America in 1916. He worked in many, many hotels and he made his way and got this little store going. You could see his little counter and his pastries. And it was basically Sam's Lincoln Square Luncheonette at 66th and Broadway, 101 West 66th Street. But working in this place at that time, as you could see, a roast beef, ham sandwich, Virginia, and all other sandwiches were 15 cents. A cup of coffee, five cents. Breakfast, 15 cents and up. So 101 West 66th Street is where he opened his business in Manhattan. This gentleman came into my grandfather's restaurant and he interviewed my grandfather, um, Grant Reynolds, and he was an um, uh, American artist and illustrator. So he sketched out this sketch and they're talking to him and interviewing him about his beginnings. And he said he started out with a small little store in Lincoln Square and it became Mike Shipahoy the way we know it much later. Um, but he did tell him about his very, very beginnings and how he started. And so this is a great article because it tells the story when he started and how he came to New York. And it gives you all his history and how the Shipahoy comes about. 
it's interesting that we use Google today and Google, everything is Google. All the kids today, Google, we go to the, the website, we go to Google to do our searches. So I went to Google and I put in ship ahoy. And what did I find? This is my first, first hit, a ship that never goes to sea on Broadway, helped build a hospital in Greece. It's telling my grandfather's history on a site on people. I have no idea who these people are. It's Landmark West. They're at 45 West 67th Street. And basically this site actually not only dedicated this portion to my grandfather, but to many, many people who lived in Lincoln Square. Because this whole area at that time, after like in, when my grandfather was there into the 60s, they start to condemn the area to build Lincoln Center. So my grandfather's restaurant was right in the middle of Lincoln, Lincoln Square. And it said, it gives his whole history. I was so impressed that they did my grandfather's history. And it was the first hit when I came up with Google for Ship Ahoy. It's very interesting. So even though he's been gone for many, many years, he is still remembered. His store was still remembered. It's part of the history of Lincoln Square. This is a menu, which is one of the black and white with red print menus from the Ship Ahoy dated 1941. It's part of a repository and it's cited at uh, this sighting. You could see it's at the um, Johnson and Wales University. They have a copy of this menu. This person collected menus and he donated it to the school. It's registered, you see, he said, if you post a, a menu, address it, we will mail it. This was part of his advertising. He was known all over the States and all over New York and out of New York, this says Rutherford, New Jersey, because he invested in delivering mail to people and it became something beautiful that is a memory sending it to somebody and they got a copy of his menu. Um, he was very, very, very ahead of his time in advertising. He was an immigrant, but very, very open to the public and very happy to help and serve the people. So it's interesting that there is things like this. You can buy on eBay. You can buy postcards. You'll see down the road. I'm going to show you some examples of things that are actually still for sale in 2022 online. Here's one of the postcards that you could buy online. They were charging like $24 for my grandfather's postcard. Here's another example. This was a way for him to advertise his restaurant in Manhattan. Visit Mike Shippahoy Seafood Grotto at 66th and Columbus and Broadway. Where to be sure visit Shippahoy that never goes to sea. So this was his way of advertising and it's wonderful. And he used to do these little tiny things, little facts and um, talking about where the fish was. I mean, this was the way he was able to serve the, the, his customers. This is a copy of one of the photographs of 66th and Broadway when he now is Mike Shippahoy Seafood Grotto. So he comes from one little tiny small store and he expands and he keeps opening and buying space until he has from Broadway to Columbus Circle. So he now is on the whole corner of Ship Ahoy. It's no longer just a little coffee shop that you saw in the beginning. Here's another beautiful shot. He was also um, very much a part, as I said in the beginning, that uh, for the Catherine Association, he actually built this float for the Greek Independence Parade and it's taken a shot right in front of the Ship Ahoy. He even had a truck bringing the fish to the restaurant. This is so amazing. My grandfather was very, 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 very into his work and to serving the public. And he was a great chef, by the way. This is a copy of one of his checks made out to the Eastern Commission Company for fish, $100. This is back in the 40s. Um, Everything is in color. Can you imagine? This is 1957, this check. But he was doing this from 29 until he retired in 65 and before he passed away. This is a color photo of Mike Shippahoy in Manhattan. You could see the cars are uh, much newer at the time. So this is a much later photograph. This is Lincoln Square. 
101 West 66th Street. This is an actual photograph of the bar, Mike Shippahoy's bar. And this is actual picture of the gentleman and the bartenders working at the bar. This is a menu that is a wine list. And I took a photograph of it in this way so you could see the weight at the very top is an actual anchor. The anchor is steel. And you could see the steel anchor attached to every single wine list when you got it. This is a copy of his 1945 menu. It's all in color. And here's the menu in front. And let's see, Sea Breeze Fish Dinners, $2.25 for a deluxe. When you went to the Ship Ahoy, you could take a picture and have it sent to you. And it was enclosed in this bifold photograph holder. And it is also in color. So when you open this, you got a photograph at you at the Ship Ahoy. This is so amazing. He actually bought these trays from the Navy. Um, they were, he used to go to sales. He bought from the Navy. He bought from um, sales for the ship equipment. He went as far as Massachusetts. He went all over the country and he bought the items that actually were in his store and that made up his store and displayed. Now, the Western Union, um, this is great, Ship Ahoy Lobster Shop. This is the deluxe lobster tray. I will have one of these for $2.50. He served it on this tray and it became with a large lobster with deviled crabs, oysters on the clams on the shell, casino, big scallops, potatoes. You got salad, you got soup, dessert of your choice and coffee for $2.50. This is from the Daily News, December 9th, 1943. You could see Ed Sullivan at the top and the bottom of this ad says, ads, New York skylines, Mike Shippahoy, where Broadway meets Columbus and you meet the celebrities of the world. And you could see that it says it's a show place in the city for the people to see. The ship that never goes to sea. This is on uh, an ad also, and you could see the photograph on, they're sitting on the boat, Patricia, is my sister Patty and my sister Ellen. And this is um, a week by the photograph by Joe Engels. This is 1952. Dinner at sea at 666 and Broadway. I like this because this is um, my grandfather and my mom is in the back and this Peter Samet and the price fighter whom everybody loved at that time. Um, so these are the celebrities that used to come into our restaurant all the time. And it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful idea to remember my grandfather and all his hard work. Jack Dempsey. This is a postcard wishing everybody well. It's actually um, probably for season's greetings. That's my sister Patty in the phone booth and my grandfather on the other side. Interesting enough, I found this photograph right next to it on the Kitherian site, which is in California. This photograph was donated to the Kitherian of California by uh, Peter Panaretos. Um, this is probably one of his family members. So this little girl is sitting with my grandfather in the phone booth and took a picture with her. It's very similar to the one with my sister. And it's beautiful. The Catherian Society in California, I came across doing a search for my grandfather, and they had an entire web page dedicated to my grandfather and all his um, benefactor things that he did for his island in Greece, in Kithara. Um, so it was so wonderful that, see, people don't forget the good things that you do and all the good things that he did for his island and his people. This is a photograph, February 17th, 1940. It's the crew of the Ship Ahoy. It tells you, it shows everybody who is part of his crew. From the kitchen, chefs, maitre d's, waiters, and everybody is in uniform. In this photograph, you get to see the dining rooms. There are several different rooms in the, um, in the restaurant. And my mom is being served by a waiter in the, in the right photograph. She is in a boat, in a lifeboat, being served by the waiter.
here again is the waiter taking an order for a couple of young ladies and his staff to the picture to the left. This is the submarine room. This is a, um, an incredible feat on my grandfather. He bought all of these um, items from ship sales and he de decorated every single room in the ship Ahoy was decorated to some theme of ship. And so this is called the submarine room. I actually still have some of these artifacts. This is the main dining room. You could actually have dinner in a lifeboat. This is another dining room where you can actually sit in a boat and be served dinner. And actually this is my grandfather, my grandmother, my sisters and brothers, my mom having dinner at the restaurant. Another photograph in the submarine room. He called this submarine room the Nautilus. And that's my grandma, my grandfather and some friends. This is taken in front of the restaurant in the city. That's my dad, my mom, Patty, Joseph, Ellen, Michael, and Rita. And that's Patty sitting on her boat because her no, the boat is named Patricia. This is my sister Ellen and my brother Joseph, and they're sitting on another boat. And you could see oysters in the back, and there are several boats, and his is from Captain Mike and his crew. This is from Ballantyne. Um, it was a goodwill in February of 1941, and it was an, they took ads to help support the goodwill of Ballantyne. And so I thought this was very nice. I copied this out. Um, it tells you about the restaurant, where it is, what it's about, and um, how he wanted to salute all his good work. His checks were in color, his matchbooks were in color, his ads, his specials, even in the coat room where you put your hat and your coat to check it, had a special card. And it says, this hat belongs to Mr. So-and-so in the address. And it is so beautifully done. And again, back in the 40s, doing color work was incredibly expensive. He loved to do this. It was beautiful, beautiful work. These are two photographs of the one of the in the front of the store when you pass the windows. He had the fish frozen in ice. It's kind of hard to see the actual fish, but you could see the blocks of ice. And inside the ice is what it says in front. And he put the signs in front of each of them. Here's another great shot of the ship Ahoy from the main entrance. And this is a short video. That's my mother, my grandmother, and my uncle Sonny. These photographs were taken many, many, many years ago, and um, I had them transferred from 16 millimeter to um, DVD to preserve them. There's, you know, the film is starting to go bad since it's very old. I think my mom in that picture is probably around 16. Oh, there's my grandpa, Jack Dempsey. That's probably the day they took that photo, probably. and everybody wants to get a picture with him. Let's see who's coming. There's my grandma, my mom, Peter Samet. He loved to take pictures. He was a photographer. Um, I still have a lot of his cameras and he played violin. So there he's entertaining his guests. Now you get to see 66th in Broadway. 
and you get to see the showcase people just to go looking in the window to watch the fish and the ice blocks that we saw in the two photographs. It's a very busy thoroughfare. So this is Manhattan many years ago. So from his humble beginnings, started out in a very small place and expanded to the ship ahoy. Oh, there's the fish and the ice. Now we come to Long Beach. You could see this is Neptune Boulevard, the end of the boardwalk. And you could see Shore Road, which is back then was called Front Street. And from this shot looking south, you could see the lifeguard um, station. You could see the tower and the house right in here, the white house with the garage is what he originally bought. And then he expanded going west all the way to the corner he bought that additional property and he expanded it to make his home his summer home and his business and then becoming his full-time residence even though he had a place in the city so he was running new york and he started to uh make long beach his other home and his business now you get to see what he did with the property he expanded the home he added a solarium he added the lighthouse and the business and a garden. And you could still see that Front Street, Shore Road is a two-way street and you could see all the cars there. You could see the beach from here. Now this is looking north. You could see the stand where he sold French fries and hot dogs and ice cream. And there's the ice cream sign and soda, 10 cents, ice cream, Louis Sherry, 10 cents. And I think that's my grandma. This is a great shot of the beach. You could still see um, that Long Beach is still, you can see in the side, there's another tower in the background, which is the one that's on Broadway. So there's two towers here. There's a steel tower and there's a wooden tower. Here's a color photo looking north. This is the back of the restaurant at the beach. You had service at the back of the restaurant on the beach. This is the building of the addition, which he added now a third part of the restaurant. So we had the stand and now he's building the fish house. This is the building of that. And you could see it. This is one of the small menus. Um, and you could see that completed building right there in this photograph. And still you'd get a whole lobster for $2 and 50 cents and a sirloin steak for 375 with all the trimmings. And there's a photograph of the old part and the new part with the lighthouse. So this is the addition that you saw in the beginning the building that they were working on. There's another great shot of it. This is from the Independent 1960. Now in Long Beach open all year from 12 to 1 a.m. the Ship Ahoy, Neptune Boulevard on the oceanfront where the boardwalk meets Neptune on the ocean. Let's drop anchor at the Ship Ahoy. Here's two ads from the newspaper. Uh, 10 Neptune Boulevard on the oceanfront, a lobster dinner now is $3.50 and it includes all the trimmings. Everything on here is included in the dinner. Salad, soup, dessert, and coffee. There's my dad working in the kitchen um, at Neptune Boulevard. Now this is the home. We're looking south to the beach. This is the home and his garden. This is looking north. It's my grandma. 
let's have a party. He had a lot of parties and he uh, had a lot of guests from all over. Um, this is a beautiful shot. You see the back of the house and the lighthouse. This is in the winter. This was in the back of the house. You could see the lifeguard station and the tower and that's my sister Patty on the boat. This is on their porch and you could see the boardwalk from here. No buildings, you could see all the way down the boardwalk, there's nothing there, it's empty property. Their backyard was the beach and that's my sister on the slide. My sister Patty, my brother Joseph and Ellen, they're in the sand on the beach in the back of their house. There's my whole sisters and brothers, the five, Patricia, Joseph, Ellen, Michael, Rita on the slide. There's Patty on the boardwalk, riding her bicycle. You see the ship Ahoy. Now you're in the fifties because you see the buildings there that weren't there before. Now you see the houses that are now still on Neptune Boulevard. There's the houses, the Bailey houses. This is the garden, Patty, my grandma and my grandpa. Patty and Nana in the garden. He loved his garden. He was truly, truly very, very um, a good manager, a chef. He was very creative and businessman, but he loved to be in the garden. It was very peaceful for him. Um, he loved flowers and vegetables. And so when he wasn't working in the restaurant, this is what he did. He loved the garden. This is looking down Neptune Boulevard. You see very sparse, there's hardly anything built there. It's another shot from the, looking into the beach. And there's my grandpa in the garden, picking the vegetables. He's picking the, the, the squash. And that's his um, complete pick, probably getting ready from the fall. He's picking everything, the tomatoes, the vegetables, squash. And uh, he really loved being in the garden. This is the dining room inside the house at 10 Neptune Boulevard or 616 Shore Road or 16 Front Street. Um, it's interesting, there's my sister Ellen, there's my grandpa, my grandma and a friend. And this dining room, if you come to my house, this is the same dining room. We have everything in this dining room is in my house presently. So um, I feel like I'm sitting there right now because I sit there every day in his dining room in my house. Thank you, Papa. And this is my sister, Patty. And this is a short film of them on the beach growing up and the restaurant. So that was Patty and Ellen, and this is Joseph. My Nana. And that's the gate coming in the garden. I have that gate in the side of my house. Long Beach was a great place to grow up. Um, Sad that it's not still there. And there's my grandpa, my Nana, and that's Patricia, Joseph, and Ellen. So this is probably like 1948. And she's a baby. So cute.
See Neptune Boulevard looking north. You don't see anything. It's all clear. There's no houses there. There's nothing there. That's the side of the restaurant. There's the lighthouse. Looking to the house. Now you're coming around the beach. That's the stand, Mike Chippehoy. And there's the backyard. I think that's the Lincoln. Can't quite make it out. That's Neptune Boulevard, look at that. There's the other tower, the steel tower that's on Broadway. And there's some of the photos they're serving on the beach. There's the, Le the Lido, you see the Lido Hotel. So many people have memories of my grandfather's place. I'm glad he was able to take these uh, movies um, to preserve our heritage in Long Beach that no longer is here. Now this is an apartment building. When I see the Lido, I think of the story my mom told me that one morning they woke up and they saw uh, soldiers all over the beach. <laughs> so that were they were stationed, of course, at the Lido Hotel. This was a very, very busy beach, very busy thoroughfare. Even the house looked like a ship. I love the spiral staircase and the lighthouse. The portholes. I wish I grew up there. It's like paradise.
He loved his garden, his dahlias. You know, this was all sand. My grandfather had to dig all that out and put soil in to be able to create this garden. Here's my sister Patty. This is probably probably around 1948. Oh, she's showing her tomatoes she picked. And Aunt Ellen, yep, 48, because Ellen's born in 48. Oh, they're in the garden, Papa. Neptune Boulevard. Every single detail, the ships, the lifeboats, preserves, you see every single detail is like a ship. Just the way he built the ship Ahoy in the city, he expanded and made it beautiful. And the kids, of course, played in the back. This was their playground. Hi, Lana. That's my patty. So this again, it's about nineteen forty eight. So now we have Neptune Boulevard, and in May 17th, 1951, he um, opens a ship's grill at 12 West Park, 
And this is the ad from the Long Island Independent telling about his next um, business that's going to be open called the Ship's Grill, opening tomorrow at um, 12 West Park. So this is now his other establishment. So he's got the city, he's got Neptune Beach, and now he opens a place on Park Avenue. And there it is. Um, if you look at the end of the building, you see Ship Ahoy Restaurant with an arrow entering the Lafayette building. It says Mike Ship Ahoy Restaurant. So you entered in through the lobby. Um, of course, today the lobby is not the same. They have boarded it and there's no more shop windows and so on. And you'll see right next to that, there's an alleyway. And the next two buildings is what is Geno's today. And there's the Park David, which actually um, the penguin, you could see the penguin there. Um, that's 20 West Park and it's 12 West is right here. That's the restaurant. This is a front view of the ship's grill. Now he expanded again. So he went from a single store at 12 West Park. He took 10 West, so it's 10 and 12. And now he has the whole two stores. Cocktail lounge, bar and grill. This is the Gotham Life, um, the Metropolitan Guide uh, by Gene Orlin, talking about the Ship Ahoy in uh, New York comes to 12 West in Long Beach. He has the Sug Harbor Ship Ahoy at Neptune Beach and now at 12 West Park. This is a menu from 12 West Park. Um, you're talking about now much, much down the road. So let's see how much is lobster. Let's see, let's see, combinations. Oh, 325, it's not too bad. Still about the same price. So he kept his prices pretty good for that time. Um, this is the independent, of course, in August of 65, I lost my grandfather. And this is um, his obituary in independent. A famous restaurateur who owns many uh, famous restaurants in the city, um, the love and love Long Beach and he labored hard for his progress of the Ship Ahoy in the city and in Long Beach um, and kept up all his traditions. And this is a picture of him in front of the Ship Ahoy at Neptune. This is from the newspaper, the Greek newspaper. Um, of course, again, he was very philanthropic. He gave monies to his country um, to help his people and his island. And this is his obituary in the Greek newspaper. He passed away August 17, 1965. This is 12 West Park now. Um, this is in the 70s, 69, 70. Um, my mother then took the restaurant and made the Ship Ahoy Jr. And that's my sister Rita actually in the dining room um, serving. This is 12 West Park, New York. This is from the 12 West Park. Um, these are from the Independence, Ship Ahoy, 12 West Park. And um, Mother's Day special dinner. 395 and up. This is a, a, a beautiful plaque that was given to my parents in June of 72 to Jack Polis, my dad and the Shipahoy family. This is from the Kiwanis, from um, his devotion to the, the members of the Kiwanis Club. Shipahoy Junior Specials, stuff, um, flounder with crab meat, Long Island duck, roast beef, takeout, just call, 12 West Park, Long Beach, New York. So my mother carried on the traditions of her father. Um, this is an award from Chamber of Commerce um, for a holiday program that they did. And this is a certificate, Stanley Flashman and Lawrence Elovich. I like this photograph. There's not any of them like it because it has all of my family. Um, my grandfather, my grandmother, Patricia, Joseph, Ellen, Michael, Rita, my parents, and of course me. I'm hardly in anything because I'm kind of like the youngest of the family. Um, it, this has to be right before he passed away because I was born in 64 and I, I'm a baby in my grandmother's arms. So I love this because this actually has me as part of the family. Um, most of the other photographs are just the five children and my parents and my grandparents. So I'm actually there with my Nana. And there I am working with my sisters. Um, I'm still... Uh, She's holding me up. I'm in my snowsuit and I have my little apron on. So I'm ready to go to work with my sisters um, at the store. Um, thank you for joining me for my program today. Um, this is a very special time for me to remember my family here at Long Beach.
Thank you for coming and have a beautiful day. I'll see you on my next program. Bye.